Hello and welcome to the MB Om podcast, where you will learn to master the business of yoga with guests from around the world who have experienced becoming successful yoga teachers, studio owners, and much more. Now, here's your host, Amanda Kingsmith. Hello and welcome to another episode of the MBOM podcast. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Yoga Boss Babe. You guys have been hearing about Yoga Boss Babe for a number of episodes now, and I'm so excited that I've had the opportunity to partner with them. If this is the first time that you're tuning into MBOM and you have no idea what Yoga Boss Babe is, head back a couple of episodes and listen to the interview that I did with founder and CEO of Yoga Boss Babe, Liz Nguyen. She talks about her story, what inspired her around Yoga Boss Babe, and so much more. In the meantime, Yoga Boss Babe is a monthly subscription box. It shows up right at your doorstep with everything that you need for your yoga business. It's designed with female entrepreneurs in mind, and it has... Things like lip chap, cozy socks, tea, the perfect journal for putting your sequences in, and so much more. If you want to get started with Yoga Boss Babe today, head on over to yogabossbabe.com and enter MBOM and get a discount off your very first box. Before we jump into today's episode, I also want to remind you that Kelly Smith from Yoga For You Online and I are offering a really awesome retreat in Nicaragua at the end of April. It's called Elevate Your Yoga Biz, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You get seven days, six nights, one-on-one time with Kelly and myself in beautiful Nicaragua. We're going to be right on the beach. You're going to have time for local activities. We're going to have daily masterclasses where we talk about all things yoga business and And we were running a really great promo over the last couple of weeks, but the biggest piece of feedback that we got was that it was a little bit out of your price range. So we've dropped the price a little bit. So head on over to bit.ly.com forward slash elevate your yoga and grab a spot while there still is one. All right, on to today's episode of the podcast. I am so excited to be joined by Patricia Lohan, who is a yoga teacher, a female entrepreneur, and a feng shui expert. Now, I have to be honest, when Patricia emailed me and said, I would love to come on your podcast and talk about feng shui, I thought to myself, I run a podcast in the business of yoga. I have no idea why on earth I would interview you. And I said something a little bit politer than that in my response email, and she wrote back, with all the reasons why feng shui relates to yoga teachers and yoga studio owners and completely sold me on this topic. And it's so fascinating. When I think about, or when I thought about feng shui before this episode, I thought about, you know, organizing things beautifully, having really nice, fancy furniture and, you know, creating an environment that you enjoy being in. And there are those elements to feng shui, but it's so, so much more than that. And it goes beyond your home. It goes into the studio that you own or that you teach or that you practice at. It goes into every space within your life. It goes into the bag that you carry, the clothes that you wear and so much more. So on this episode, Patricia and I cover the importance of feng shui as a yoga teacher, as an entrepreneur, as a yoga studio owner and tips for getting yourself started with setting up a system for really great positive feng shui. So without further ado, here's Patricia. I'm very excited to be joined on the podcast today by Patricia Lohan, who's joining me all the way from Ubud in Bali, which is one of my favorite places in the entire world. Welcome to the podcast today, Patricia. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm very excited to be here. Greetings from the boat. (laughs) And I'm also excited because we have a kind of a unique episode today. We're talking, we're going to dive into some feng shui. Did I say that right? Mm Mm-hmm. You did. There's actually, you know what, it it doesn't really matter. Feng shui, feng shui, you know, it really, it's, the principles are all the same. The way we say it is different all over the world. (laughs) Okay, awesome. Well, I'm excited to dive into some concepts around that and especially how it can really apply to yoga teachers, yoga studio owners, and, you know, just business in general. Uh, But I thought a good place to start would be to back up a little bit. And if you could tell me a little bit about your journey, how you got into yoga, how you got into feng shui, um, and that sort of thing. Yeah. For sure. Well, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I'm excited and I feel like this is just the absolutely amazing um, combination. I'm looking forward to sharing lots around how we can, you can really utilize feng shui in your studios to really just accelerate success for yourself and for your businesses. Um, but my background is uh, like a being an entrepreneur and I set up a business um, with my, for like pretty much most 
in my life. Um, I set up my business, a business in um, my early 20s with my dad in back in Ireland. Um, and it definitely wasn't my soul's purpose, basically. I was running a bar and restaurant. I was 24, 30 staff. It was a very, very hectic business. Um, and I kind of like burnt the, the, the candle at both ends, party hard, really kind of went for it. And um, but things started to happen and people started to show up into our business that um, really he was quite interesting. So one day I had this lady who was like a meditation teacher came in and I kind of ended up going to her meditation classes. Another guy came in and he was a yoga teacher. And I'm like, hey, what are your yoga classes? You do yoga. You're a yoga teacher. And he's like, yeah. Um, and I really didn't have a clue that this was the start of like a spiritual awakening, basically, because these customers were just coming in and showing up in my life. But as come, showing up with customers in the restaurant. And um, so I went to my first yoga class and that class has a very profound effect on me because I was at the time working 17 hour days. I went into the class. I arrived a few minutes late and I sat down and he said, this is an hour for you. And the tears rolled down my eyes and I was like, what? I don't have time for me. Like, this is alien. It was a completely alien experience after being probably four years in the business, like full time, crazy hours. And I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So I never missed another class of his. Um, every single Tuesday, I would jot out and go to his class. And at that same time, I ended up sitting in front of a life coach and lots of things started unfolding for me. And I really kind of really got into the yoga. Um, and for me, it was this practice that that really opened me up physically, mentally, spiritually, you know, my whole body started to open and I started to get these new opportunities and ideas kind of drift into my awareness and into my life, which was amazing. Um, and I ended up going away to this retreat in Italy, um, a beautiful retreat. And at the time I had like trained in Reiki and, you know, just, just was dabbling in lots of spiritual stuff and I'd cards. And um, I remember turning around and seeing the yoga teacher and going, you know, she kind of looked like she had her whole life together. She had a lovely husband and, and two kids and she just looked amazing. It was full of the just the joys. And I'm like, I want to be like her because I definitely was not like her. I was pretty like miserable in my job. Like on the outside, my life looked pretty amazing. You know, I had like a beautiful two door BMW. I had all the designer clothes and handbags that I could want for great income, great business there that I was running, a CV apartment, like seriously tick the box of um, physical aesthetic, things that you kind of were on the must have as a 20 year old, 20 something year old. I had it all, um, but I was absolutely in bits. And every Friday I would come home from work and cry on the couch, just totally miserable. Um, and thankfully, yoga, meditation, all these things started to come into my life. Um, and on that retreat, I don't know, I see did something really big. Um, that I didn't really realize um, the power of be careful what you wish for. Um, and a few, uh, maybe about a six months later, my mum came to the restaurant and she'd been away visiting my sister who lives in Australia. And uh, people had said to her, oh, you know, you, you must be so hard for you leaving your daughter in Australia. Like she's so far away. And my mum was like, no, she's so happy. Like I'm happy. I just want her to be happy. And she turned around and she saw me and I was like dressed head to toe in black, whereas people who may know me now, like I'm wearing this like fuchsia top. I've got like everything is pretty much like <laughs> rainbow colored. And um, I was wearing black every day. And I was like, it was like I was going to my own funeral in this business. I was just worn out. And she looked at me. And she's like, you know what? I think you need to leave. And I went, funny, I'm going to go to India to become a yoga teacher. And she was like, huh? And I don't know where those words came from. It just came. And I um, quit the job, decluttered my entire life. At that stage, the relationship had, had ended. I um, rode off my car. I <laughs> basically, like, my 42 pairs of shoes were gone, bags of clothes, everything was gone. And I ended up moving to India for a month, I thought. And I was there for nearly a year. Um, and I trained in lots of different amazing modalities, sound healing, um, became a Reiki master, um, did two different yoga teacher trainings, lived in an ashram, like traveled around India. It was a very profound experience. Now, when I moved back, one of, I also trained in, in with the Tibetan singing bowls. So I moved back to Ireland a year and a bit later. And I was like, what am I going to do? I'm gonna, I don't know. So I was like, I'll teach a bit of yoga. I'll do a bit of singing bowls. I'll, you know, just try, just, you know, start out. So I moved to a new city. I moved to Dublin. 
And I started from scratch. Basically, um, I had um, a big loan from all of my travels uh, and um, I maxed out credit card because I bought lots of singing bowls and basically <laughs> was like, I don't know where I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I set up for dinner one night in, in Dublin with my friends and I said, I'm moving to Dublin after Christmas. And they were like, well, where are you going to live? And I'm like, I don't know. And one girl turns around, like, these are old college friends. They're not into anything spiritual or anything like this at all. And they were like, um, and I was like, well, I don't know. She's like, well, I have a single room. You, you can take our single room rent free. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And the other girl goes, um, I have a bicycle. You, you can you can borrow my bicycle. You can have my bicycle, and I'm like, thanks. So I had like a bicycle, and I had somewhere to stay, um, and then I had met this guy through a friend of a friend who had a yoga studio that needed like he didn't really want to manage. It was like he rented out the rooms of it, but he wanted someone to kind of look after the negotiating that. And he was like, well, you can have the yoga space. And do you, like so many hours of free yoga room and just if you manage the space. And I was like, okay. So I had like a few slots. So I just made posters and, you know, started from scratch with my yoga practice, yoga business. Um, and that was really a very interesting time because I discovered really very quickly in my yoga teaching career was that yoga teaching was not actually what yoga was for, was supposed to be for me. Um, it was the, it was the gap into, my spiritual awakening and my incredible journey and learning and accessing my intuitive gifts and my healing gifts. Um, and I love yoga for me, but then when it became kind of the business side, I was like, I'm not really sure if this is exactly what I want to do, even though I love teaching. So I taught, but then the sound healing and the therapy practice grew a lot. So I used to do a lot of gong baths at the end of my yoga classes and that kind of actually took over. So my sound healing practice was being built up and I was doing meditation circles and gong baths and, you know, I would always bring yoga in, but it was all kind of like growing very organically, essentially. It was amazing, amazing. And fast forward, maybe two years later, I was like the singing bowl girl in, <laughs> in Ireland. I basically was on national papers and the radio and I had trained 30 people how to become sound healers. And, you know, people were coming in saying, hey, can you teach me this? Can you? So I really just it all just grew pretty fast. Um, and the practice was going great. My clients were having amazing results, like doing, like clearing things. But what happened was, and I think this really leads into the work that we're doing as, 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 um, well, what I wanted to kind of cover around yoga and feng shui and your business and entrepreneurship because, you know, my business was growing steadily and it was good and it was a passion project and I was very persistent and I kept showing up with it. But, my clients were getting good results, but they still not, were not quite getting the results I wanted to see for them. And I was like, what is going on here? Now, rewind to when I was 16. And for my 16th birthday, I had got books about feng shui. Um, and I always had this interest in it. Like, so I was always interested. We moved house a lot of times when I was growing up. And it was kind of like I remember sitting out and drawing out the plan and looking at the different areas and trying to figure it out at home and being like, oh, this is too complicated and closing the book. But at that time, my main focus was growing my business. Apart from growing my business, was like attracting my soulmate. So I went, hey, there's this feng shui stuff I can do for love. So I got, once I had my, um, afforded, my business was big enough for me to leave my little single room at my friend's place. I got a new place and I feng shui it for love. And I'm like, I'm calling in this guy. That's it. So what I got is, my bedroom all set up. I need to ask, like, what does that mm -hmm. mean? Like, how did you actually set it up for that? So there's a lot to do with, like, creating the space. So obviously, like, I was living in a single bed that was, like, pushed against the wall. So like having a bed pushed against the wall is pushing away love. You know, there's no space in a single bed for someone to invite someone into your life. So like a double bed, two bedside lockers, special lamps, balance and harmony in your bedroom, like using the energies of yin and yang. So the colors were not too bright Um, making sure that I had like spare hangers for a guy. I energized my love and marriage area. So every part of your home represents a different part of your life. So there's like your health and well-being area, your love and marriage area. Area, your wealth and prosperity area, your career area. Um, and that's, so I really just focused on the love and marriage. Basically, that was kind of my main thing. Um, and a few months later, I met Ken, my husband. And I was like, oh my God, this worked for Ken to meet this Ken. Like I can use this for other things. So um, as you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears 
I came across an amazing teacher um, and I dove deeper into using feng shui. And really, that was when the penny dropped for me, because I'm sure as people are listening here as yoga teachers and yoga business owners, you're you understand like law of attraction, like like attracts like we're like magnets. So whatever your environment is, like when you got your home or your studio, whatever your beliefs were around like money or worthiness or well-being or, you know, potential that really is what the energy you're calling in with that that environment um and then what happens is we do all this inner work so i'm like a huge advocate for inner work and self-development and personal growth like i'm still i always am working with somebody doing something you know clearing some whatever needs to be cleared but what i found with myself and my clients was that they were doing that inner work but they were going home to a house that had their old belief systems, that was the energy of their past, that had things that were in it that was the, the past. So that's kind of where the kind of it all unfolds for me. I was like, hang on a minute. Your house has a personality. And when um, Ken and I, we both trained as feng shui consultants, figured this out, like learned this. It was like every house has a different personality, um, which can be good for people or good for money, bad for people or bad for money or one or the other. So it could be good for people and bad for money or it could be both. It could be if it's good for people, good for money. It's like happy days, amazing building, amazing. This is this is where it gets really, really interesting, because not only does it have an overall personality, I kind of like to see build, buildings and businesses like they have their own personality, basically like it's a person and it has a consciousness. So it has eyes, it has ears, it he feels and hears everything that's going on in it. Um, but also it has a specific energy running through it. So just like our bodies have specific energy, you know, like we acupuncture, the different l- lines of chi are running through your body. It's the exact same thing with your with your yoga studio or with your home. That energy is running around. It can be positive or negative. So it can be really in your favor and allowing really cool things to flow in. Or it could be a block. So there could be something really standing in the way of like um, attracting more fame and reputation. So you're like, oh, my God, like everyone says like the best yoga classes when they come. But nobody knows about me or I'm not being seen um, or I'm not getting my blogs being featured or um, I'm not getting paid or there's blocks around money. These different blocks are what's going on, like can be happening in the energy of the building. That's so, so interesting. Um, I know. And like, this is why when, when we were connecting, I was like, honestly, like, because my passion is working with entrepreneurs and like, you know, yoga is like a huge part of my own life. And I'm like, seriously, people don't realize that like, it's not you. It's not the amount of marketing you're doing. It's not the quality of your teaching. It's not like, it's not like you're, you know, it could be a money block, but it's like, if you building that you are teaching in, or if your home is bad for money, it's going to limit the energy like of you being able to attract money into your life. Yeah. So that is really a huge fundamental that we don't realize. And when that happened for when, when that kind of came and dawned on me, I was like, oh, my God, more people need to know about this. Um, and that's what happened. Um, we decided to, you know, I was running my feng shui business because my clients were, you know, I would be asking them, like, tell me about your bedroom. Tell me about, like, what's going on with your house. And then they would be like, hey, you're always talking about my bedroom. Like, come and feng shui my house. And I would do their house and be like, this is why the work that you have been doing isn't progressing far enough. Like, it's you're not getting over the kind of, like, massive hump or the, the there's something blocked. So that's what unfolded. And really, it kind of turned my practice on its ear and Ken and I got married. We decided we wanted to travel and move, you know, become more lifestyle entrepreneurs. Um, so that's how I ended up kind of going. Actually, for me, it's the fun. If we get the if we get the foundations in right, like we get the actual environment right, like that it's fertile for your it's like manifesting, like on on like I don't know on turbo charge. Because once you've the environment right, the seeds you plant, your intention, the intentions you seed will be will be easier to grow and nurture and like happen because it's all in alignment. Um, so that's when we moved to Bali. Um, a year, two years, nearly two years in 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 January, we'll be here. Um, um, and I kind of went okay. I think people want to work to me, work with me. One on one, we need to do their house first. We need to have your feng shui right. We need to have the energy aligned 
to support you. And then all the other inner work is where it will just literally lift the roof off, like with success. Yeah. Wow. That's so interesting to hear about. And yeah, for context for listeners, um, when I first got your email, Patricia, I was like, you sound really interesting, but like I run a podcast in the business of yoga. Like I don't really know what we're going to talk about. And you totally sold yeah. me on it. And it sounds even now as we're talking about it, I'm really grateful that we are able to connect so that listeners can learn about this because I think that, yeah. I think that there's this concept where people can, you know, walk into a space and you do feel something like it makes you either feel like, comfortable yeah. or not comfortable. And there's definitely places where you're like, oh, I'm more productive here. I'm not so productive here. And I think that people never really like look into the why behind that. And it sounds like a lot of that might yeah. be around the feng shui of it. Oh my God, totally. And you know, like I know as, as yoga practitioners, like I know one of the fundamentals will be like clearing your space, you know, making sure the space is clear using, you know, sage or Palo Santo or bells or something just to clear the space of, of the energy, which is like, you know, something that probably will need to be done between every, every class, you know, because there's so many people really doing such emotional clearing during their own practice. You know, I just like literally were, um, last year totally decluttered a yoga mat. I was like, I'm ready to let go of everything that's been poured onto that mat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. You know, and that's really one of the, the one of the elements of feng shui is really keeping the, the space clear. But on a deeper energetic level, there's more to it. There's definitely more to it so um i'm happy to like i'm just thinking what would be useful for your listeners would be really around some of the kind of fundamental things that they can do because feng shui works on three different levels so the first level is really around keeping the space clear um clear of clutter and i know as yoga student studios will be kept like obviously you've got your your necessities your mats your bolsters all, all of that but, you know, all of anything in excess or other people's stuff that's kind of like really do it, keeping on top of like no clutter and um, keeping your space nice and clean. That's one level. And then energetically clean with space clearing regularly, bells. I love doing layers of clearing as well, um, especially because my background is with the sound healing, but working with the with them um, some some incense or sage or Palo Santo, then going into the space with sound. So whether it's a bell or a chime or a bowl to clear and then maybe spritzing something like rose water, you know, so you're really kind of getting into all the different levels of vibrational stuff that could be stuck, especially into the corners. And um, that's a big one. Um, and then the next level after the, the decluttering um, and keeping the space clear would be the intentional. So there's, Every area, like I was saying, there's different parts of your your space that will represent different parts of your um, business and life. So my favorite part is working with clients who, like, obviously are entrepreneurs, um, because I'm just totally an entrepreneur for so long. Um, but uh, the, the the fact that you know when you do something positive in your own space, like your 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 love and marriage area, for example. That actually also mirrors back into your um, relationships, your business partnerships and relationships. So when you do something in your own personal environment, it'll mirror back into your business environment as well. Like it mirrors back into your business, too. So it works really nicely in harmony. Um, but from a very practical standpoint, when you get to the studio, like there's some really simple things that can make a huge difference, like Get when you arrive to your studio, like make sure the front door is clean. Um, you know, this is where, so like I, um, maybe I mentioned like your, your house or your building or your studio has eyes, ears, it feels things. It's like a person. So the eyes are the windows. So keeping the windows clean so you can really see out into the world. Like, so there's, you've got a clear clarity and vision of what you're doing. Um, the mouth is the front door. So this is where the chi enters. This is where all of your clients come in, where the money comes in, where the positive things it all flows in there. So keeping the front door nice and clean, really inviting, a nice welcome mat, an open sign. Like uh, this may sound like kind of like, oh, like an open sign. But, you know, you need to be really clear with telling the universe, like open. We're open for business. Like, come on in. So open sign. 
making sure that your sign is visible, that like your studio, that the sign is very visible, that you can see it, that people from the road passing like that's the yoga studio. You know, it's it's very blatant. And this kind of is a marketing thing, but it's also very um, powerful feng shui because we want to call that energy in. So when you get to your front door, you've got a nice welcome sign, maybe some flowers um, and then make sure the door is easy to open. You know, that there's, you know, I've been to so many different studios, like over the world, all over the world. And I really like, sometimes I'm kind of like bemused. I I can't get in, you know, (laughs) there's like bells and buzzers. There's no clear indicators of like, how do I get in? Like the doors, it's hard to get in. So making sure that it's easy to get in or clear instructions. Also that the door opens easily because where there is a struggle, like this is also kind of struggle in like, uh, uh, if you have to push to get in, that's also the chi, the energy, the money has to push. It has to, it, there has to be a struggle before you can get in until you allow it. So, you know, just releasing that nice and easily. Um, and when you come in, like opening the door, what's the first thing you see? Like, what's the first thing your students see? What is it something, does it something that sparks joy for you? Like, is it like one of your favorite inspirational quotes or is it like all these like mats and plinths and yoga and, and, and like, um, something that's not appeasing to the eye. Like you really want to make sure that when you come in, you see something you're like, Oh yeah, like I'm so happy to be here. Or like, it's like breathe or you've arrived or something that you're like, yes. So really it's that journey and, and thinking about it, it's the journey of your clients, but it's also the journey of the chi coming into your business. So it's coming in and it's like, I've been welcomed. Now, something to avoid when you open the front door of your studio and you step in is to have a mirror facing you. So a mirror will reflect the energy out. So it'll literally be like, you've done all this effort bringing the energy in and then it's like, goodbye, get out. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're like sending it back out the door again. So making sure that you have um that 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 area is um that there's no mirror there but something that maybe it's where you put your altar what what you know tune into what feels right for you with that um but that's some like simple little things to start thinking about around getting the energy into your house or into and into your house or into your studio they all kind of like merge into the one really Mm -hmm. and then so that's great because that's like the entrance way sort of of when you walk in. And then how can you like set up the actual space, like the yoga studio space where you're actually practicing? Yeah. So where you're actually practicing, one of the most important things for the, the, the teacher is to make sure that the teacher, as a teacher, you can see the door and that you have a wall behind you. Because you want to be in the power position in the studio, in the studio at all times. So if you have the door behind you, you're in a vulnerable place. Like you're, you can't see what's coming at you. You really want to make sure that you can see the door and that you have a wall behind you. So that's just even your own positioning in the studio. Have that, um, laid out really important. Um, because that, that's, um, making sure you're in that strong position will give you more empowerment um, for sure. Then when it comes to the studio itself, as I said, you know, keeping it clear is important. But when we work with feng shui, um, each part of your studio or your the whole premises represents a different part of your business. Um, um, there's some parts of your business that, um, for example, in the northeast area, ideally, that's where you would put your... Um, that was, that's ideally where you would have your altar. Now, in feng shui, there's different schools of feng shui. So the school of feng shui that I practice is the classical feng shui. So it's basically flying stars. It's very specific. So um, as I said, like each house or each building has its own personality, whether it's good for people, good for money. Um, and then down into the nitty gritty, each area has its own energy going going on as well. So when it comes to the school that we work with, we actually use a compass. So it's not like you stand at the door and over in that area is this or over there, that area is the career area it's more about the compass reading so you would find with your compass the um knowledge wisdom spirituality area which is the northeast now there's no there's no hard and fast like rules with this one because um if if ideally that is a good space for you to put a statue or put your altar northeast would be great and if you can and maybe you could just put something that's symbolic of an altar or maybe a Ganesha or something that is, inspires you for connection um, in, in that area. Um, and then, for example, for attracting, say, more clients, you would look at the southeast area of your studio. Um, now, 
this is where the, the different layers come on. So there's like the intentional um, feng shui where you would look at so your southeast areas, your wealth and prosperity. Um, you could possibly put something that represents wealth and prosperity there, like the lucky bamboo or some affirmations about like continuous um, flow of income from doing what you're passionate about, from teaching classes, from full yoga classes, you know, whatever that that res- whatever resonates with you and just place it in that area. Now, when we work with clients, we give them like specific enhancers and remedies to kind of neutralize. So essentially, I come in like the acupuncturist to say, oh, well, this area, the energy is off. You need to implement, you need to put this specific remedy in. Um, that's kind of, that's where it comes to the, the one-to-one element. But from a kind of general perspective, the Southeast area, find that area, maybe put some citrine in there, um, put something that makes you feel abundant, um, you know, maybe um, put a class, like, I don't know. Um, in so let me just think. So that's your southeast, the south area. Maybe you've been featured in a newspaper. Your south area is your fame and reputation. So how you shine your light in the world. So if you want to be seen as like the I don't know, and life wasn't from a non-egoic, but like you know one of the best reputation yoga studios in your city, or you've had an article written about you, you would maybe place it in there and put it in a frame in the South area. So it's kind of really energizing that fame, that reputation, that really good vibes for you and your business. Hmm, that's so and, um, interesting. It, yeah. So it works like that. Like there's nine areas of your bit, nine areas of um, the Bagua the, or the plan that each area represents a different part of your life. So you've got your family or life business every part so you've got like your career area your family and community area your spiritual area um helpful people and travel your love and marriage your relationships your health area obviously health and well-being um your creativity so yeah that's um it's kind of like how how uh, how it works so um i'd love to know if you have any other questions yeah definitely so that's really interesting to get like a broad overview of that because so you know, just from my background, I don't have any background in feng shui. And I always kind of thought about it like, you know, when you're sitting at a restaurant with friends, there's kind of like, they always stick stuff in the middle of the table. And there's, you know, it's nice to like move that out of the way. Cause I feel like it kind of blocks that connection that you can have somebody with somebody like diagonally yeah. or forward facing. And then I knew there was these concepts like within your home where there's like a way to set it up. So it's more like, warm when somebody enters or it's more like cozy whatever you're going for and i love the the concept of like the love in the marriage area um it makes so much sense like if you have the wall against or the bed against one wall it's not very inviting for that person who's going to be against that side uh, to actually like yeah. make their home there so my next question is you know a lot of people who are listening are going to be um, there's going to be yoga studio owners. So I think you've touched really nicely on how they can kind of improve their, their feng shui, um, in their business. But then for yoga teachers, I feel like the life of a yoga teacher, and you would know this as well is a lot about, you know, going between different studios and then you come home and you probably have your space for your home practice and your place where you do your admin and that sort of thing. How can you, as a yoga teacher, go into somebody else's studio space and kind of, you know, create that energy within the studio um, when it's not like your space where you can't actually set things up? Yeah. Um, great question. So for me, your feng shui starts at home. So like you carry it then with you wherever you go. So I would say you start with your own home um, and like, try, like find your Southeast area, find your prosperity area, get that energized. So that would be the main thing is like look at your own home, like get that entrance of your own home sorted, clear your clutter, like start look doing some more intentional space, like around your space, look for your spiritual, uh, you know, doing that. Because when you have, and I think we touched on this before we, about like being grounded, that when your energy is grounded with the energy of a supportive environment, wherever you go, it you will carry it with you. So start with your home um, is like a really big one. Um, and then especially say, for example, if you're doing admin at home or your own personal practice make sure you're in your power position like make sure you have you you have a wall behind you you know set up your desk like properly um i have um an ebook that um, people can get to teach you how to set up your office like set up your desk so like set yourself up for success in your home when you're doing that, that those practices at home and then when you move out of your space 
then make sure, and I think this is a kind of an, a pretty vague, but pretty broad, but it's very important. It's like protect your energy. So like bring that intention of like, I am carrying this, this space with me, like my feng shui with me to where I go and then protect your life, your bubble of light before you get into the studio. So before you even like leave your house, put your bubble of light around you, tune into the energy of your own home, um, of its supporting you to then move out and once you've your energy protected then you bring that in and spread that light into your space so for me it would be really about like when you go into your studio or into that space clear it for sure before or you even start the, start your class, get it all set up. You know, even if there's something that you bring that's intentional from your space, like from your home, like your candle, like this is, this is, this is your energy now. And then, um, a visualization of like expanding that light that you created at home into it, like a bubble, so that the clients come in and they're in your bubble of, um, that field of energy, um, will definitely be really beneficial. Um, and then again, at the end of the class, draw drawing that bubble in and bringing it into, into yourself again. I like that. So it's like, you don't necessarily have to worry so much about what the space is like that you're teaching in, as long as you're bringing, you know, that positivity and that energy with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, it's very, very tricky. You know, I've taught classes in so many different places and workshops in different places. And, you know, I, I could get like really crazy about the feng shui and be like, this is wrong and that's wrong and it's wrong. But like, because you're that transient thing, you, we can't really go that much into it. Like, obviously, if you've like an interest in feng shui, like you could talk to the studio owner and if there's some fundamental stuff, like, you know, the door isn't working or this, like those little fundamentals, you could obviously be like, hey, you know, the door, that's, that's really like causing trouble. You know, maybe just like pinpoint those small things, but more so it's about you, um, carrying your energy and starting with your home because once your home is supporting you then the ripple effect will call in and you know what will happen is you're you're less likely going to be going to be called into work in spaces that are not in alignment so you'll end up um kind of being in spaces that are supportive anyways and it, it's a very interesting process like that um i find it when I go to some clients' houses, like we don't, don't do, do, do that much in person anymore. Like if I'm in Ireland or I was in the States and some clients were like, hey, you're going to be in LA, like come do my house, come see my house. Like, and I've been working with them for a few months at that stage. So I was like, yeah, sure. Like, like I'll pick you up. You know, it was really nice just to meet in person. But yeah, it's more about like when you have your home environment um, ready and supportive, it ripples into all of the other aspects and you'll end up like, yeah, so say for example, my clients who have like, who have already said they may have had a house that was like bad for money, bad for people, we've done all the feng shui, and then they're like, hey, we've decided to sell this house. They will end up magnetically attracting a house that's good for people and good for money because they've been in that energy already. You know, so it's really um, as your energy of your environment raises up, so does so does what you call in. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So, you know, money is a big topic, I think, in the yoga industry. I feel like it's one of the biggest things that – uh, yoga teachers struggle with, especially if you want to be a full-time yoga teacher. Um, where, yeah. what can you do to kind of, you know, increase the abundance in your feng shui in your home? Um, so the most important thing is to look at that southeast area. Like number one, like declutter. Like honestly, I can't. And, and it's and like decluttering. I sometimes I feel like messy. People are like, "Oh, my house is a messy." It's not mess. It's just stuff that's broken, that's not working anymore. Anything that you're making do with, you know, there's holes and things like that is all depleting energy. And the last thing you want is something that's going to be depleting your energy. Make sure you have a beautiful wallet that sparks joy. You know, honestly, this may sound like kind of crazy, but like if you have and you treat something, the object that you carry your money around in with absolute gratitude and love, that will make a difference, like genuinely. So get a beautiful wallet that sparks joy. You know, feng shui your handbag, like get rid of all the stuff that's in it that's too much. Make sure it's your, your space that that's all organized. Um, and then go into your house. So like for sure, letting go. But when you're um, decluttering, be powerfully intentional with what it is you're welcoming in. So for example, I remember a client who, who, um, who sent me a message and she's like, oh my God, I keep decluttering. I've got rid of so much stuff. And my kids keep coming home every weekend from their dad's house with loads of stupid junk toys. And like, it, like this is not what I want. She's, and I said, you know what? Why don't you write a list of what it is you want to call in that you replace? So like whatever you're letting go of, 
be clear with what you're replacing it with. So are you replacing it with like 20 new yoga students? Students? Are you replacing it with like some yoga one-to-ones? Are you, what are you replacing it with? Like how, what are you replacing? So she wrote down, she's like, I am, I'm, what I'm decluttering, I am welcoming in instead. I'm welcoming in, um, I guess she wrote money for a new washing machine, um, money for the Christmas gifts for all the kids and money for something else. Like she wrote the list. Within two weeks, she messaged me. She's like, you'll never guess. I totally just got all that. I have exactly the amount of money that I asked for. So it's really been intentional with that level of like what you're letting go of, making space for it, and then spending some time on the Southeast area, your wealth and prosperity area, um, and making sure that it's um, really clear of clutter, that it sparks joy, um, and just spending some time really being grateful for your environment, you know? Sometimes people feel like feng shui is this thing that I'm going to tell them, like, throw out everything, paint your house white, and, (laughs) you know, that's, like, not it, or put these weird frogs in this corner, like, Get some Japanese furniture. (laughs) Japanese furniture and jade tigers, like... That is not what my practice is about. Like, honestly, my fundamental is energy. Like, I am so caught up with making sure that the energy is right. Like, you can do all that stuff, too. Like, I, all my clients are, like, they post, like, things that are in our group. Like, I just got these, like, things. My friend came home from China and gave me these because I know I'm into feng shui. And I'm like, yeah, you can, you can keep it if you want. Do you like it? Like, my most important thing is, like, do you like it? And they're like, well, I'm like, just because your friend gave it to you doesn't mean you have to keep it. Um, number two, it needs to spark joy. Um, so, you know, that energy is important. Like mine, it, my work is all about the energy, making sure the energy is flowing right and easily and smoothly around the space and it's harmonized. And once that's true, all the other aspects will fall into place. Yeah, yeah, I really like that. I feel like because you've traveled so much and because you've moved around and whatnot, you've probably, you know, experienced the feeling of like coming home and being like, why do I still have all this stuff? I need to get rid of it. Uh, but I yeah. think that if you haven't kind of lived with almost nothing, it's really hard to, to think about paring down your stuff. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any tips for anyone out there? Cause I think there's more people who, you know, have kind of like lived in the same space for a while than who, you know, travel quite regularly. Do you have any tips for those people on how to start paring down their stuff? For sure. Yeah. Um, so one, there's a, I have a few things. One of them I find really useful is to have a friend come and who is just like, you just tell them, I want to get rid of like start with say your wardrobe like start in one place or start with one cupboard that's actually what I would start with you start with one thing like don't think I'm going to declutter the whole house because then it gets crazy and you don't do anything so you start with like one cupboard or one underwear drawer or like start with one thing and be like oh my god that feels great wow I've got rid of all these knickers that have like holes in them you know and I'm going to keep the ones that are nice and have the ones that spark joy and go to the next thing um but I find it really useful to have a friend um I'm brutal like with my friends like I love them but when it comes to like decluttering their wardrobes like I just stand there and I'm like no 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 get rid get rid get rid and it's a very very positive thing because we're not like and there's no him and hawing it's like you don't think so and then I'm like and then they're like well maybe and I'm like we'll put it in the maybe pile so we have three piles one is the keep one is the maybe and one is the get rid um and that is that's how i've done everything since i've like since i've ever started being in, in this kind of world of being way more minimal with what i own um it's like keep maybe and then get rid of and then the get rid of pile just put, is put into a bag and it's put nearer the door this is one of the tricks that is definitely making things easier because sometimes the maybe pile stuff really needs to go like a lot of it needs to go um and what i would say with the maybe pile is you put it into a box you write a list of what you have put in the box you put it in in the box and you put the list in with the box and then before you like just put it away for like a month for like two weeks if you don't look for anything in that box for the last two weeks you then go back and be like okay what's in the box you try and remember i bet you you won't even remember half the things if you remember them like then you're allowed to keep it but if you can't remember it you're like i have not missed it and i can't remember it time to go um but moving things closer to the door is one of my tricks you know for sure um it's like okay this going i'm not sure about it like i I, you know i spent a lot of money on it oh my god it was my first ever thing you know like we've all of these stories attached to it and what i say to my clients about this is that you know what 
your past is your past and you will never ever going to like lose your past like that that's not it's like part of you but the stuff that's attached to it has a lot of stories so like there's negative stories there's positive stories and it's very emotive be mindful be gentle but just say am i going backwards or am i going forwards I get, where am I going? Does this spark joy? Like if it's stuff that doesn't fit you anymore, like just let it go. You are going to be able to welcome in brand new cool stuff that fits you gorgeously um, when you let it go. Because if there's not space, there's no way to welcome in new things. So this is a really, it's a very powerful practice. And I totally don't like underestimate the power of it. I've had several different situations with things in my own life that I found really hard to let go of. But I know that they were part of like dresses that were connected to that life when I was like out drinking, like all the time, I was, like all the flash stuff. And I'm like, that is not who I want to even be associated with anymore. Like that's a part of me that I don't want to actually have anymore. And why would I keep those clothes? Why mm -hmm. would I keep that life? You know, it's like you move to be a yoga teacher from a corporate. Why would you keep the corporate seats? You know, maybe it's kind of like, oh, maybe I need to go back there. But when you let go of them, it's going to be like, oh, my God, actually, now the universe hears. I'm not like tugging onto the past. I'm like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, I love that. It's kind of funny that you brought up that specific example because I don't, I don't own very much stuff out of what I have with me, which is like a 75 liter backpack or something like that. But yeah. I have like one closet at my parents' house that still has stuff. And there's been a few things that were really expensive from my corporate world as well that I haven't let go of because they still fit me. So it's really funny that you brought yeah. up that example. <laughs> I'm like, what if I have to get a corporate <laughs> job again? And I'm like so broke that I can't afford clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh my God. And then that also then goes into your mindset because you're like, oh my God, like we as yoga teachers are supposed to be embodying like abundance and all of the positive things in life. And, and, you know, that sense of trust and flow, um, and that us holding on to stuff is like, we're not actually walking our talk. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not like by having that, that energy. And it's like, well, if we're, if we're supposed to embody that whole sense of like non-attachment, you know, okay, <laughs> we did only practice it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember like when I first moved into a house when I was in university with, uh, with girlfriends, we were like just absolutely disastrous for the first couple months that we lived there. And we found like collectively that it was really hard for us to get work done there. Like it was really hard to study. Yeah. So we implemented like a Sunday clean day where we would tidy everything up and just make sure that like the space was really organized so that we'd be set up for the week. And that's something that I've continued in my life up until now. Like I just feel like there's something about, you know, if your house is cluttered and your house is messy and there's stuff everywhere, it's yeah. really hard to have a clear mental space to actually like get work done. Yeah. And I feel like the thing, the big part of that is that like everything is a mirror. So we know, we totally know this philosophy of like the person comes up, it's a mirror for you. Your house is a mirror for you. Mm -hmm. You know, your house is a total mirror for you. And like interestingly, even with our own house currently where we're here in Ubud, um, Ken and I have been really working. Like there's been just a lot going on with business and with work and everything. And I've been ha finding it hard to switch off. And one of the things I realized was like, oh my God, we don't have any place to kind of properly relax. Like to really just like switch off, like we've had to just kind of leave to be able to relax um, because it's like just the way the house is shaped and that. So we just literally are getting a new couch. And um, I was like, you know, we're making a commitment to Bali. We're just buying furniture. <laughs> so we're like getting a couch, putting hammocks in, like just being like, OK, what do we want to our, our life to represent? We want it to less look like like a lot of work and less like relaxation and balance. So it's like, well, our house is a vision board for what we want in our lives. So we're going to have the things that are going to bring us that as well. So um, I, I just, I, you know, because we, we all have blind spots. You know, that was just something that I didn't even notice until a couple of months ago. And I was like, hang on a minute. Like, we've just been so busy, which is amazing. And it, it's, I, I love it. But I was kind of like, what is going on? Like, there seems to be a bit of a disharmony. And I've literally just walked around. I'm like, because there's nowhere for us to relax here. Like, that's exactly it. So it was this kind of, oh, okay. There's always going to be blind spots. You're always going to be growing. Like, for me, I have um, a client who posted recently. She's like, I feel like yoga is like, or that I feel like feng shui is like yoga. Like, it's a constant 
process like you're never going to ever like stop decluttering like we're never like the cycles for feng shui the 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 energies are never going to stop like moving it's always a flow and you're just always going to grow and evolve with it yeah definitely yeah i can relate to what you were saying about the couch um with the co-working space that we work at here in mexico city my boyfriend and i were talking about how the one that we worked at actually in ubud in bali was really great because like it had this really nice like spaces to relax in so you could like take your breaks throughout the day and really like disconnect from your laptop and the space we work in now doesn't really have spaces like that and so it's a lot harder to like take a break like it's almost like you have to physically like leave the space to kind of like decompress Mm -hmm. from what you're working on yeah so it's it's kind of interesting like that but i remember i used to do homework in my bed and I remember somebody was like, yeah. oh, you should always keep your bed as like kind of the sacred space where all you do is sleep. Yeah. Like maybe you sleep and you read yeah. and like it's not a place where you like eat your meals. It's not a place where you do your work. It's like very much your place where you sleep and you'll sleep better. And it's something that I've yeah. you know, really been conscious about implementing over the last couple of years. And I have, you know, found oh, a difference. Sure. It's like my sanctuary, like where that's where I Oh relax. my God. Yeah. And actually that's like, I, like I'm always, when it comes to bedrooms, I'm like, your bedroom is for three things, rest, romance, relaxation. That's it. I'm like, no computers, no technology, like just trying to keep that disconnect because it's about boundaries. Like it really is about boundaries. And when you have those boundaries, you're going to get better sleep. You're going to have, you know, you're going to enjoy your partner more because you're not like having all this, like, you know, and especially say like even like exercise equipment or your laptop, like all of that where it keeps your mind active. And like, how do you get a good night's sleep if there's something in the corner of the room that's like work, 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 or <laughs> Like, you know, or like loads of books. I see a lot of clients who have like lots and lots of books in their bedrooms. I'm like, you know how much energy is in a book? Like, there's so much energy in those books. Like, not saying don't have any books in your bedroom. It's just really about being mindful of your space. And yeah, keeping your bedroom, like for sure, like don't work in your bed. Don't, you know, keeping that space, a sanctuary for sleep, for rest, romance and um, and harmonious. Like, yeah, that it's, it's huge. And that also goes for like your office you know, try and just disconnect. Like we literally, when we, when we leave our office, that's it. We're like gone out of the office, doors closed, locked. That's it for the day. Done, dusted, over. Um, and that really just creates that boundary. So, you know, when you're on, you're on, when you're off, you're off and just makes life easier. Yeah. I like that. I know that you mentioned that you have, you know, a giveaway that talks about setting up your workspace, but can you go over a couple of tips to ensure that your workspace is in alignment with whatever you're trying to achieve in your business? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, 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 the most, I, I actually kind of, I touched on it when we were talking about the yoga studio, but like you're make sure you're in a power position like this. I can't like really emphasize this enough, like door wall behind you, see the door, be able to be in your power position, keeping your space organized. Like, as I said, boundaries, if you happen to have like, so there's some instances that your office, your desk may have to be in your bedroom. And you know what, if that's the case, like put a, put a, a shawl over it, like put a shawl over it at nighttime. So it's like disconnecting you from your bed, from your, from your work. So there's that again, a creating a boundary or like an altar. You know, I, I have worked with like, obviously I have a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs as my clients. Um, and you know, it's great to have altars and have spiritual statues and your angel cards and your tower cards and your books and all of that. Like I am amazing. Like I love all them. I have my altar here beside me here. But, um, you know, that's not really appropriate for your bedroom either. Now, if it is in your bedroom and, you know, some people are living in a shared house and they basically their lives are in their bedroom, like, you know, just even covering it at nighttime so that you're creating the space of like, when I'm working, I'm working. When I'm doing my meditation, I'm doing my meditation and setting it up in a space that's like more organized um, for sure is really, really important. Yeah. Other things that I kind of like may sound kind of basic, but I am, um, you know, if you are working in like a co-working space or in a, in a, in an office, make sure you have a good chair, you know, make sure you have something that's like not wobbly, you know, because that everything has like symbolism. It's like if you're sitting on something that unstable or a broken chair, it's like that's broken number one, it's depleting, but it's unstable. You know, it's unstable. So you want to make sure you're, you're a stable place that you're sitting on, that you have a good firm table, that that is also really stable. Um, and that the things around you in your environment, like inspire you, you know, they inspire you. Like you, 
Use your space like it's your vision board for your life, like where you're going, not necessarily your past. So like letting go of things that are not connected to you now, like letting go, letting go, letting go of anything that doesn't like represent you where you want to go in your business. Like, so I've been in the past, I used to do like little mini 15 minute like audits for people for their offices. Um, and one of the interesting things was, was in these offices was sometimes the clients had a lot of other people's stuff in their office. And I'm like, whose office is this? Is this just your office or is it your husband's and your children? They're like, no, it's just mine. And I'm like, well, how come you have like suitcases and your kids toys and like (laughs) all this stuff in the space? I'm like, no, no, no. Like if this is your space, it's your space. You need to get rid of everything else belonging to them out of it. So it's yours. Um, And then um, I'll never forget one client. She has this huge bookcase, like ceiling to floor, wall to wall bookcase. And I'm like, oh, amazing. And I'm like, well, you know, she's a food writer. That was her. um, She was moving into the food writing and food events. I'm like, oh, so like what's on the bookshelves? Are they like your cookery books and your food books? And she's like, oh, no, most of them are my husband's books. Oh, they're all my books to do my law degree. And I'm like, when did you do your law degree? It's like, "Uh, like 20 20 years ago. And I was like, okay, well, um, I don't think you're going to need those books anymore. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, maybe your husband's books, they like, why are they in your office? And she was like, oh my God, I never thought about this. So like, oh, like the before and after photos were insane because she was messaging me going, oh my God, look at this, look at this, look at this. And she got rid of all of the books that were to do with her husband out of her office, moved all of her cookery books up there. And she's like, oh, my God, now it sparks joy. They inspire me. They connect with me. So, you know, having the things, you know, around you in your desk, like if you're a yoga teacher, like obviously your yoga product, I can never pronounce that name, or like an autobiography of a yogi or whatever books that you're into, like whatever those books are, you know, have them around you or, you know, that they're inspiring. They're connected. They're like kind of like, oh, this is what, what my vision is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's awesome. I'm curious if like, so I'm kind of thinking about my personal life a little bit and asking this question. And I think that there's a couple people that I know out there that are kind of in a similar, similar situation. Like I do most of my work at a co working space and then I come home and there's not really like a designated space for me to work and for my boyfriend to work. So I think sometimes like, you know, we've got one desk and it's kind of his space and then I kind of just work wherever it's like comfortable. So maybe it's on the couch, maybe it's at the kitchen table. Do you have tips for kind of creating that space, like kind of a portable space for yourself and setting yourself up? Yeah, I would say the, so for example, like if you have to use the kitchen table, you have to use it. Like for me, I'm very practical around feng shui. I'm like, you know what? You use what you've got. And if you, your partner, your boyfriend has the, is using the desk right now, you should use the kitchen table. Like, Set it up for work and just be like, this is my work time. Like it's very much around the intentionality. But if you're going to go and have your dinner there a few hours, like an hour or two later, make sure you pack it all away. Like make sure that you're kind of like that's it's again about creating those boundaries. So if you have to work in that place, you're like setting, OK, I'm sitting here. I'm going to do this work. I'm going to set up like get your little whatever it is that you need beside you, whether it's like you just have your little like hole with your stationery and you're like, now I'm on work mode like that's. <laughs> It. Like it's yeah, mine's my day timer. But then, <laughs> yeah, and then literally, then but before you kind of then transition, it's like setting the table for dinner. So, for example, if the kitchen table is the place that you have to work from, you need to then make sure that there's a boundary between and a difference between morning and between the the um between like the working and the not working. So, for example, if it's like your kitchen table. Like get some kitchen mats, like some place mats so that when you're sitting at your dinner table, you clear the table, you set the table for dinner, you put everything out, nice cutlery, nice place mats. And then you're like, okay, now it's dinner time. You know, so it's about like some small anchors that connect you to that activity. Yeah, that's awesome. That's super helpful. And I feel like I know so many people who are like super portable or don't have like a designated desk space or workspace in their Um, at their houses, especially with yoga teachers. It's like, if you work full-time as a yoga teacher, you do do some admin, but you don't spend so much time that maybe spend so much time at a computer that maybe you think that like, you know, a specific office is something that you need. So I I feel like it's good to know that you can use those other spaces, but just creating those boundaries is really important. And then always keeping your bedroom as your bedroom keeping your bedroom as your bedroom for sure. And yeah, use those other spaces. And that I would also say, you know, 
for me, when I first really got into my business um, as a, like a spiritual entrepreneur, um, starting with the sound healing and all of that, like it was interesting to, you know, I kind of wasn't like a hundred percent serious about it. I kind of treated it more like a hobby as opposed to it being like an, a passion project as opposed to be like, actually, hang on a minute. I kind of need to make my proper living out of this and really focus a little bit. Um, and I think if I had my time more over again, I would be more, a little bit more like, hang on a minute. I do deserve a desk. Yes, I do deserve a space that's going to be assigned for my business. And yeah, like whatever that means to you to like create it or whatever those anchors need to be when you sit down that you have like a candle that you're like, this is my time. I'm going to sit here. I'm working on my business. But like, you know, give yourself the the um, permission to like own it and be like, yes, I do need somewhere that I need to do my admin that I need to do my stuff. And and when you do that, it gives it such a really different energy for creating and attracting success. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. And I'm, I'm curious if, because I think there's, you, you kind of talked about this with this idea of like getting rid of old stuff, like clothes with holes in them or things that are broken. And I think that sometimes people hold on to that stuff um, because maybe they don't feel like they have the financial situation to like invest in something new. So they're like, yeah. okay, I'll just keep wearing, you know, this old pair of yoga pants because yeah. I don't have a hundred dollars to buy a new pair. Um, do you feel yeah. like it kind of works like that? The energy kind of works in a way that like, if you invest into that new thing, then it makes you feel better. And then your business can thrive from there. Totally. Like, honestly, if you're putting on stuff that, do- that depletes you and has like this kind of, I, I'm not, I'm not getting rid of these because I can't afford it. Like that energy you're putting out is so negative. Like it's like pushing away clients basically. Whereas if you're showing up with like, oh my God, like I love my yoga pants and I love what I'm wearing. And you know, like that's a completely different energy. You know, it's a completely different energy. So really having that. And I, I, I also would say, you know, you know, you can do incremental upgrades. You know, for me, when I was a yoga teacher, like I would go to TK Maxx, but I would always pick stuff that I loved, do you know? So it wasn't like, I'm just going to get this because it, cause it's cheap. I would be like, I'm only going to get something that I love. And I'm um, especially say, for example, one of my, I remember working with a client and we were looking at our wall and she had this like big painting. And I'm like, do you like this painting? She's like, oh, it's just like holding space until I find something new. And I'm like, you know what? You're never going to find something new until you make that space there. Like until you actually let go of that, you're never going to find the right thing. And then the perfect thing will come in. Like, so really it's about making the space. So do the decluttering. Like, obviously I'm not saying throw out all your yoga pants, <laughs> but throw out the really ones that are like, okay, these ones I don't need. And like, how many pairs of yoga pants do you really need? If you have like two or three that you absolutely adore, you know, then you're going to be great. And you'd be like, right, I'm going to get rid of the other ones, keep these ones. And I'm making space for brand new ones and guaranteed you'll have new clients. Like you'll have new people show up and you're like, Oh my God. Like, or you'll be, someone will be like, Oh my God, there's like a massive sale on onesie brand yoga leggings or, you know, you're like, Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. That's, that's definitely something that I feel like I've gone back and forth on. Like I I know the power of like investing in yourself and and that sort of thing, but it's like, you know, I'll flip flop. I'll be like, Oh, I should get, you know, this, this new thing. Like it'll, you know, really help my business or help me feel really great about myself. And then, you know, I'm like, Oh, but like, I really shouldn't charge that to my credit card. Like, you know, I don't have that extra money this month. And it's kind of this like hard thing to balance because I think as humans, we kind of look for this like direct return or that sort of thing. I I feel like it's one of those concepts where it's not necessarily that direct return. No, it's not. And it'll come around in very different ways. So it's about trusting that process, you know, and, um, yeah. And it's, it's also like a practice. It really is a practice. And, you know, I really have embraced it as a, as a practice to just go through my wardrobe and let go of things and only have things that spark joy. I would rather have less then loads of stuff. I would rather have less yoga leggings and less clothes, but making sure that I love every single piece. That's it. And that's my whole motto. And you know what? I look better and I feel great. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. I love the idea of like kind of like a capsule wardrobe made of, you know, pieces that you really, really adore and, you know, you feel yeah. good in all of them as opposed to having those like mm-hmm. one-off pieces that you're like, eh, I'll just like put it on because it's what I have. Exactly. Exactly. Amazing. Do you have anything else that you want to share around feng shui and being an entrepreneur and the yoga industry? Um, do I have anything else to share about me? No, I feel like, you know, <laughs> we've talked a lot. So, um, being an entrepreneur for me is just about persistence and being, and like, once you're passionate about what you do and you just keep showing up, like, 
you you know you're you're um you will be rewarded um and I suppose for me from a feng shui perspective it's quite interesting because um oftentimes when people come to me it's like it's not actually them they've been doing all the inner work but it's actually their environment so it's kind of like a it's this weird little push pull going like what's going on and then it's like oh look it's because your house is this or you know so that's really for me part of my journey is supporting people on that um making sure that they've got all of, they've got everything aligned um to support them to grow so but persistence and passion like they're my two key words for just you know doing it if you love what you do and you're passionate and you're just persistent um the universe will reward you but you have to let go of the stuff that doesn't serve you anymore so like each other yeah i love that that's amazing um where can people go to find out more about what you do patricia um, so people come find me at patricialohan.com. Um, and on there I have, um, an ebook that I was saying about creating, um, at your office, down, like setting up your office. But there's loads of tips there about like color coding your files and, and getting yourself set up. Lots of different, there's lo- and some prosperity tips, um, in there. So I would love you to go and get access that you can also follow me on facebook or instagram um i am also always like posting little tips um i've got loads of um on facebook i post like little daily little feng shui tips because it's just loads <laughs> so there's always a little tip just to kind of like oh that's something new um it really just kind of helps people um you know get into that mode of creating an environment that's supportive for them and their business yeah definitely i can't wait to check out more about what you offer and learn more about feng shui um you've educated me a ton on this today. There's so much more than I ever thought around it. And so I'm really grateful that we had the opportunity to talk. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate it. And, you know, if anybody has any questions, questions like feel free to just reach out to me um i am always like my favorite thing to do is to support entrepreneurs so if there's something you want to know about like my business or feng shui or whatever just feel free to to reach out and connect amazing thank you so i hope that you enjoyed that episode and you got lots of learnings about it i know we covered a lot of stuff very quickly so head on over to patricialohan.com sign up for her ebook you can find the show notes that have a breakdown of what we talked about at mbomyoga.com you can also just reach out to patricia as she said if you have questions if you're trying to set up your home with these types of concepts and you're just getting confused with the things we talked about definitely reach out to her she's so so knowledgeable as you heard in the podcast I also wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who listens to the show. I just popped on iTunes just to, you know, check out reviews and that sort of thing. And I realized that on American iTunes, I crossed the top 200 in careers, which is absolutely amazing. I honestly never even thought I would ever do that. So it's really, really cool to see myself at 181. Then I headed on over to Canadian iTunes and I'm number 33 in careers. So thank you so, so much. It's because of everyone out there who listens to the show that I was able to do that. And if you haven't left a review for the show, it's really helpful. You can just hit review right from your podcasting app or head on over to iTunes and leave a review. It's really, really helpful to get new people listening to the show. As always, you can find me online at Mastering the Business of Yoga. You can join the private Facebook community at Yoga Business Badasses. And you can always send me an email at info at mbomyoga.com if you have a question, comment, or any piece of feedback. As always, thank you so much for listening and namaste.